Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Math and Engineering Help Desk. Uh, it's been a while, and I hope that you are having a great and wonderful Wednesday. Today's video, we are going to be covering some equations on with variables on both sides. Solving equations is a topic that we are working on in eighth grade math right now, and it is something that we're going to uh, look over multiple examples and try to get uh, increase our skills. So in this video, we're going to learn how to deal with variables when there are on both sides of an equation, and still single variable equations, of course. Uh, being comfortable with fractions and also just some general overall strategies for simplification. Uh, these examples are all from section 1.3 in the Big Ideas Math Curriculum, but they also correlate uh, heavily with unit 4 in the in illustra uh, illustrative mathematics uh, curriculum. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start with this equation right here. 15 minus 2x equals negative 7x. So our goal here is to find out what x equals. So in this particular equation, we have an x on the left and we have an x on the right. Now when we have x's and variables that are on both sides of an equation, our first objective is to make sure that we uh, collect all of those variables onto one side. Now I have uh, worked, with, worked with my students on a strategy on how to move certain uh, variables to one side and variables to the other side. However, with this kind of equation, because this side over here on the right has an x already and there's no numbers with it, it makes a little more sense to move the x here that does have a number over to the other side, even though this coefficient is uh, technically larger than this coefficient. Negative 2 is greater than negative 7. So in this case, the optimal strategy here would be to add 2x to both sides. And by doing that, by adding 2x to both sides, that's going to get our x term on one side and a value of uh, 4x on the other side. So when we add 2x, this left side becomes just 15, and that will equal negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. So it's going to be 15 equals negative 5x. Now it's negative 5 times what gives me negative 15? We would divide by negative 5 as our next step. And by doing a division of negative 5, we will get x by itself on the right side. And on the left side, 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. So it's negative 3 equals x. Now, in order to check our solution, we can just plug this number back in for x in our original equation and make sure we get the same number on both sides. Well, if I do negative 7 times negative 3, that's going to be positive 21. If I do 15 minus 2 times negative 3, that's negative 6. 15 minus negative 6 is like 15 plus 6. That is also 21. So this answer checks out. OK, so in some cases, like I said, we'll have to deal with uh, putting variables on one side of an equation. Uh, if you have a side of the equation that just has a variable term, like negative 7x, it's going to be easier for you to use and keep this here. Uh, just to show you what would happen if you were to uh, add 7x instead, you would end up with 15 plus 5x equals 0. And that is a little bit more of a difficult equation to work with because you have to do an extra step. Although it's not a hard step, it's an extra step. You'd have to subtract 15 and then divide by 5. And you'd still get x equals negative 3, but it would just take you one extra step to do it instead of doing it the way that we started here. OK, our next problem, this one's a little bit more, a little more complex. This time we have variables, but the variables are inside. Um, inside of the of grouping symbols. So getting them out of the grouping symbols is going to be our first priority. Now, we have two approaches that we can actually take with this particular problem. And I'll, I'll explain the, uh, we'll do the simpler works for everything way first. And the works for everything way first is if you see variables on both sides of an equation and you see grouping symbols, you're going to be a little better off if you just go ahead and distribute first. Okay, so distributing first, negative 2 times x and negative 2 times negative 5. And then, of course, over here we have 6 times 2 and 6 times negative 1 half x. So let's go through each of those steps and just write out a simplification. I'll do the work over here for this one. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Equals 6 times 2 is 12. And then 6 times half, negative half x is negative 3x. So we'll write minus 3x there. OK, so the distribution is done. Now what we'll do is because we have sort of a binomial expression, uh, a, a value times x plus a constant or minus a constant on both sides, this is a case where we're going to want to move the x term that is lower, um, that has a lower coefficient. So negative 2 and negative 3, this coefficient is lower. Negative 3 is less than negative 2. So we will add 3x to both sides uh, here. And again, of course, there's no problem with uh, adding 2x as well. You'll just have a little negative to, to deal with. It's the same number of steps, though, of course. 
So adding 3x to both sides uh, will be our first step. Let's uh, break that down, just use that one right here. Negative 2x plus 3x is regular x, 1x, plus 10 equals 12. Okay. So by And then, of course, this 3x goes away. Now, x plus 10 equals 12. That's a simple equation to solve. We would just subtract, two, uh, subtract 10 on both sides. If I subtract 10 over here and subtract 10 over here, that's my balancing act. x would equal 2. Okay? And of course, we check the solution, make sure it works. Uh, if I do 2 minus 5, that's negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. If I do 2 minus half times 2, that's 1. So that's 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then 6 times 1 is 1. So I get the same value on both sides. So this, this uh, solution checks out. Now, I also promised that there was an alternative way to solve this problem. Now, this one's a little more advanced, but it does save you a little bit of time and a little bit of hassle, uh, although you'll still have uh, a fraction to deal with, but it is what it is. If you notice that the coefficients of what's in front of the, vari of the parentheses, if you notice that those are uh, divisible by the same number, in this case 2, you can divide 2 and 6 by 2. As a matter of fact, you can even divide it by negative 2. And by doing an entire equation by negative 2, or a multiplication problem by negative 2, that would cancel out the coefficient here. And here, this would cancel this coefficient here. So a strategy that you could employ is to remove the coefficients first, and then you would have x minus 5 equals uh, negative 3 times 2 minus 1 half x. Okay? But the problem here, of course, is if you do that, in this case, you'll still have a distribution to do. You'll still have a, uh, um, a, a term to collect. It's just that it will be a fractional coefficient, which not as many people are comfortable with. So it could be done. But in this case, I actually would not recommend it simply because we have a, a fractional coefficient. Uh, it's going to be a little more difficult for both. So this method on the left will yield a solution. You'll get a solution over here as well. But again, sometimes by dividing it off, you're actually going to create a little bit more of a difficult time for yourself. OK, next problem. Actually, next few problems. Let's go ahead and bang these out uh, on these three right here. So if we look at 2.5y plus 6 equals 4.5y minus 1. Uh, correct first step here would be to move the 2.5y over because 2.5y is less than 4.5. So subtracting 2.5y on both sides will uh, be a good first step. And then what we'll get here, and again, what we do to one side, we do to the other. What we'll get here is we'll get 6 equals 2y minus 1. Now if I add 1 to both sides, that will be 7 equals 2y. And if I divide both sides by 2, that's 3.5 equals y. If I check my answer here, 3.5 times 4.5 and 2.5 times 3.5, you're going to have, I believe, 7.25 here. Here you'll have 9.25 minus 1, um, and adding 6 and subtracting 1, uh, 4. Excuse me, 4.5 times 3.5 is 14.25 minus 1, 7.25 plus 6, 13.25 on both sides. So this answer does check out. Of course, calculators are always wonderful uh, if mental math is not your strong suit. With the second example here, this is a case where we're going to want to add, uh, sorry, subtract 2x from both sides because we already have one side that just has an x. So we don't want to move that away uh, and make it more difficult here. So in this case, we subtract 2x first from both sides. We'll have negative 5x equals 19, which means that when we divide both sides by negative 5, x will equal negative 19 divided by 5, uh, or uh, 3.8, excuse me, if you prefer decimals, negative 3.8. With this one here, we have a z outside here. We have a z inside our grouping symbol. So in this case, our first good step here is to distribute. So we distribute here 6 times 4 and 6 times negative z. That's going to be 24 minus 6z, 6 6z, excuse me, equals 2z. I almost I want to type x almost all the time. Here again, when we have this particular step, we're going to want to add 6x because 6z. See, I said it again. <laughs> uh, we're going to want to add 6z to both sides because uh, the right side has just a z term, so we want, don't want to uh, we don't want to move that term. Uh, that will equal 8z. So 24 equals 8z, which means that 3 will equal z. And if we check our work here. 4 minus 3 is 1, 6 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 3 is 6. So uh, this answer uh, does work. OK, so that takes care of those equations. Now let's see a couple more examples. Uh, here we have an equation where we have 3 minus 4x equals negative 7 minus 4x. Well, in this case, you'll notice that the coefficients are exactly the same, uh, negative 4 and negative 4. And they're on both sides of an equal sign. So you'll notice that doing the opposite by adding 4x to both sides, you'll actually cancel both of those terms away. right? And this will go away, and this will go away. 
So what happens here? You're left with a statement 3 equals negative 7. Does 3 equal negative 7? No. This is a false statement, which in mathematics we call a contradiction. If we end up with a contradiction when we are solving equations, that means that there are no solutions. Okay? No solutions is not the same as x equals 0, so make sure you don't make that mistake. No solutions means that there's no value that you can plug into x here to yield a true statement. There's nothing you can do 3 times 4 times a number, 3 minus 4 times a number, to get negative 7 minus 4 times that same number. So contradiction, right? So that's no solutions. Here was another, you've got a few more here, right? So in this case, again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do some distribution. So we have uh, v's inside grouping symbols here. The left side here is going to be 30 minus 12v, and that will equal negative 12v minus 4. Now here again, look, we've got negative 12v. We have negative 12v. When we have the same side, and this is a little shortcut now, if we have the same thing, the same term on both sides, we can actually cross that entire term out. And if we cross that whole term out, we'll see the statement 30 equals negative 4. And in this case, 30 does not equal negative 4. We have another situation where there are no solutions. There's no solution for v for this first equation. Let's take a look at the next one. We have 1 half of 6t minus 4 equals 3t minus 2. Well, if I distribute, get my t outside of this grouping symbol, I will see that 1 half of 6 is 3. 3t minus 2 equals 3t minus 2. Now look at this. In this case here, I've got the exact same thing on both sides. If I simplify this by cross-canceling out everything, I ultimately will come out, come out to 0 equals 0. Now this is a true statement. 0 always equals 0. So this is, what's called, um, this, is, this is what's called an identity. And we call this an identity. And this, whenever we arrive at an identity, our conclusion is that there are infinite solutions which means that there are any that any number we plug in for t here is going to yield a true statement. If I did 10, 6 times 10 is 60 minus 4 is 56, half of that is 20, 28, and then 30 times 30 minus 2 is 28. So anytime I plug in a number for t, I will get a true statement here because I arrive and simplify out to an identity. The same uh, kind of concept here, 2x and 2x are common to both sides of the equation, so we can cross both of those off. And this gives me 1 equals negative 1. 1 does not equal negative 1. So therefore, this is a no solutions situation. How about over here? 1 third 2b plus 9 equals 2 thirds of b plus 9 over 2. Don't let the fractions scare you. Remember, be comfortable with fractions. 1 third of 2 is 2 thirds, 2 thirds b. And 1 third of 9 is 3. And if I distribute the 2 thirds on the right, that's 2 thirds of b again. So 2 thirds of b, I can see there's a commonality here. And if I do 2 thirds times 9 over 2, that's 18 over 6, which simplifies to 3. So here's a situation where I have the exact same thing on both sides. This is an identity. And this means that there are infinite solutions. Okay, So you will and can have situations where you can have no solutions or infinite solutions when you have equations that are written with variables on both sides. So do be on the lookout for that. Okay, So that is all I have for you in this video. So this is some situations, again, where equations are on both sides. And this is leading into a discussion on systems of equations, which we'll be heading towards in our next set of videos, uh, which we already have a couple of method videos uh, already posted for my algebra class that will also apply to eighth graders that are working on systems of equations. So I hope that you had a wonderful, I uh, hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and a great day. And uh, good luck with the rest of your school year. Take care.